G'day, welcome back. Today we're gonna to do a color grading video. It has been a while, so I thought I would smash one out. Okay, so we got this footage here. This is from a short film that I recently made. It is in the circuit rounds at the moment. So I'll let you know how it goes. So this is gonna be my node setup for today. So we have a noise reduction here. We have exposure, ratio, which is contrast, our balance, saturation, and we're gonna be working in HSV and hue. Now we're gonna be using DCTL for this one and density, which will also work with a DCTL. Now DCTL is a plugin and they're fantastic. I'll leave links below for all this type of stuff. We're also gonna work with a blur plugin, which is fantastic. Last is gonna be the film grain. Now you should always put your film grain at the end. I've made a video about this. I'll put a link below or some little thing you can click up here. Now for our color management, we're gonna be working in our timeline color management today. So color management, we are in DaVinci YRGB color manage, color processing mode, custom, input color space, DaVinci wide gamut, intermediate, timeline color space, black magic design film gen five, et cetera, et cetera. And here is all your settings if you would like to know what I'm working in. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a LUT because I did grade this project using a LUT. So let's just move this across a little bit. Now, if we go to our LUTs, now I do have Cullen Kelly's LUTs, they're really good. Um, this isn't a sponsored video, he doesn't need my help. But anyway, I'm gonna use the Voyager one. I do use the other ones, um, the Pro Pack, but today we'll just use the Essentials Pack. Now, when choosing a LUT, the first thing I do is turn off Live View because that is annoying, or Live Preview. So what we'll do is give ourselves some more space and we're gonna choose a LUT. Now, I want something that's not gonna push up this green heaps and also not something that's gonna push in a lot of contrast because our image is already very contrasty. And this green here is really ugly and I wish I hadn't lit it that way, but you're gonna work with it. So let's look at this one. This one is too much. This one's not bad. Uh, I'm just gonna go through them and choose one I feel like not doing heaps, but is doing enough. So I would say I'm going to say this one here. All right, now let's go back to our clip. So we've chosen this LUT. I like the way it's doing all these oranges and all this type of stuff. And it's not really pushing the screen too hard. Now I know it looks like it is very saturated and very contrasty, but once we change our exposure and our ratio, and our balance, then you will see that this image is gonna completely change. So for exposure, we want this to be a dark and moody scene. Let's give ourselves some more space. So I'm gonna to go to my primaries here and I'm just gonna bring down our overall gain and I'm gonna bring up the lift just a little bit. We already have this nice dark looking image. And again, just bring up those lifts just a little bit. So we'll go full screen. This is before our adjustments and this is after our adjustment. So we just darkened it a lot more. We wanna get that really moody horror vibe. Now for our ratio, I want to try and keep these shadows, but then bring down the overall brightness. Now to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my custom curves here and I'm gonna bring up my curves and then bring them down in the highs. Now, if you've noticed, I have edible splines on. Now, all you have to do is come up to these three little dots and then click edible splines. Why is edible splines good? Well, because we can do a nice soft roll off on our highlights, our shadows. Let's bring that down a bit. And then we'll bring this one up. So something like. Let's say around about there. So before and then after, and that's just giving us a nice little bit of contrast. We can always come back and change this contrast if we don't like it. So let's move on to our balance. Now, sometimes when you're doing grading, you can actually skip your exposure and ratio and then start at balance and then kind of work exposure ratio if your balance is way off. Now, maybe I should have started with this one first, but that is okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our primaries once again. Now I'm gonna be using the offset wheel. 
and I'm just gonna push it. Now, before I do that, actually, I'm gonna go to my vector scope and let's just take it off and go to one. Alrighty, so at the moment we have pretty good color separation, but I want this to be more in the middle. I feel like we're way too orange and we're just losing a lot of this scene. So what I'm gonna do with my offset here, I'm just gonna bring it towards the middle. Bring it slightly to the greener side. We want to try and maintain these skin tones. We want them to be warm, but we don't want them to be overly warm. We don't want to look unnatural. So I'll go full screen. So this is before, and as you can see, we're really washed of one color. Sure, we have this color at the back, but our skin is this really weird magenta look. It looks quite gross. And we have this green that's not doing anything. So, and then afterwards, we have a more natural looking skin color, but at the moment we have problems with this green. Now, this is why I shouldn't have filmed it with this green light, because it's really playing havoc with our balance. The next thing we're gonna do is add saturation. Now, saturation and contrast are two things that actually work together. Now, this is something really important to remember, but the more contrast you add to your image, the more saturation you're adding to your image. Sometimes you may feel like your image is too saturated, and you take out saturation, but a lot of times you can actually take out the contrast to get a less saturated image. Now I'm gonna add in some saturation and then I'm gonna look at my contrast and see how that is playing. Now with my saturation, I wanna be working in a HSV color space. So go to color space, HSV. Now, if this node graph looks familiar, it is one that Kellen Kelly actually uses. I do follow his channel, he's very good. Um, but I've made a few adjustments to mine. I've put noise reduction at the front and any film grain they're gonna do, I'm gonna leave at the end, which is really important. Your film grain should always be at the end. All right, now in our saturation, again, we go to color space, HSV. Now go to channels, take off channel one and then take off channel two. But now we're just working in our saturation channel. Let's go to our gamma and just bring it up and then go to our gain bring it down slightly we don't want to add too much saturation in we don't want to go crazy so full screen so this is off and this is on we could probably add some more saturation in but I also feel like we could make this image a little more contrastier so before I add saturation in I'm gonna change my contrast so let's go back to our custom curves and let's just bring it down ever so slightly. So before and after. Do we feel like this is saturated enough? I think it looks pretty good, but we can add a little bit more in. So let's go back to our primaries and add just a little bit more in. So before and after, we're just adding a bit more saturation in his cheekbone areas and his face in general. Now, a couple of things I want to change. One is this light here and this background here because there is nothing in this background. So there's no point in our viewer's eye going towards there. In our secondary nodes, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a power window around here. We're just going to darken it all down using our favorite tool, the pen tool. Let's just make this incredibly soft. And then go to our custom curves. Let's bring it down ever so slightly. So before we have this really ugly light and then afterwards, and as you can see, we just really darken that area down, but we still have this nice light on this TV in the background looks pretty good now let's do some other things now let's focus on this green here now it probably doesn't look that apparent but this green is quite ugly if i bring up a okay here's a good frame so as you can see we have a lot of green here and it's really like making this look a lot more orange than it actually is so in our hue what we're going to do is go to effects we already have dc typed in for DCTL. Bring this one across. Now I'm using Stefan's uh, person I can't pronounce last names, DCTLs, but I'll leave a link below. They're amazing. So get on them. 
let's go to do shift now we want to be taking the screen out a little bit so shift f that'll bring up a nice full screen for your effects so we're going to go to green to yellow i'm just going to bring it across a little bit now we still have nice color separation but we've taken a lot of that ugly green out so if i take the note off we have this really, really horrible green, and it's making this area look really bright. And then we put that node back on. We have a much nicer looking color. Our image looks a little too saturated for me. So in our saturation node, I'm just gonna bring it down ever so slightly. Because I don't want my image to be super saturated. Before and after, and I know it looks like it's doing absolutely nothing on YouTube, but it is slightly doing enough. So let's get a good frame. This is a nice looking frame. Our skin tone looks good. We're still getting some detail in the background, but we have this issue here, which I don't like. So what we can do is, actually, you know what? Let's do our density first. So using the same DCOTL, let's go to density. And we're just gonna go and use our global density. So just bringing it forward. And now if you look at our image, we've gone from this image here to this image here. We have this really nice, dense looking skin tones. We still have detail in the hair. Now it's supposed to be a very moody scene. So it's okay that's really dark. I don't mind that at all. But we do need to change this light. But for now, our skin tones looking fantastic. Getting in really nice detail. This light looks really nice. But yeah, let's get rid of this garbage. So we can make a, another node. And in this one, we're gonna use a DCTL. Then we're gonna use a power window, an old pen tool. We don't need to track this because this frame is not moving. I will just soften it out just in case. Now on this one here, we're gonna to go to Hue Shift. We're gonna use Cyan to Blue gonna try and get it so it's more closely related to this light here so this is before and this is after so that's looking pretty good now we might want to desaturate it but we'll call that good for now now there's a couple of things we can do to finish this image off one of them is we're gonna put a blur around our image to get us a nice vintage look and then we're gonna add some film grain so Let's go to our blur and oval. We don't need these nodes. We didn't use them in the end. So with our blur, we want to go to our gallery and we're going to go to mono. So I think it's in lens. It is. Now we're going to use the blends wide because we shot this on anamorphic. It's put this oval around our character here. So before and afterwards. Now, if you feel like that's too much, what we can do is we can expand this, just highlight it, show compound node, and then we can actually expand these a little bit to get our images that we like a bit more. You don't have to do this. Maybe you like the fact that it's hitting his eye. Now to get out of this, just right click exit compound mode. So let's get a good frame. So this is before. So just pay attention to the top of our image here. And then this is afterwards. And we've got this really nice blur going on, which I really like. It gives us a nice vignette, blur vignette. Now in our last one, we're gonna do film grain. And again, always make sure your film grain is in last. I can't stress this enough. So film grain, put that bad boy on. I like a lot of film grain. So 16 millimeter, 500T. I like my grain size small though. Get rid of this garbage. And let's go to advanced controls. Put those shadows all the way down and bring up your mids. Bring up your highlights because film grain lives in the highlights. And let's put our opacity right up because YouTube will compress this a lot. Too much. Okay, 
So let's just have a look. So now we have this nice film grain going on. We have this nice blur. And it's really playing into that horror vibe. But that's about it. There's probably some other things we could do, but I feel like this is a good finishing point for this video. We have a nice looking image here. Skin tones look good. We have nice separation from the background. We have this nice vintage vignette blur going on. Boom grain looks good. All in all, very happy with this look. Make sure to comment below on what your thoughts are or anything else you'd like to see. I've been Drew and thanks for watching.